Thank you very much. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Khokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. Continuing with the topic of thanatology, this is the second lecture on this topic. Diagnosis of death. The diagnosis of death is basically the diagnosis of somatic death. As we have discussed in the previous lecture, that uh, the body or clinical death is called as somatic death and the organic death is the cellular death. So the diagnosis of death is basically establishment of somatic death. Because doctors are usually called to certify death when they are working in the hospitals or somewhere, they have to certify death. And in order to do this, they rely on certain so-called signs of death. The diagnosis of death is from the immediate signs which appear at the time of death and they are the immediate physical changes. Loss of tripod of life. As we know, the CNS, the CVS and the respiratory system, they are the three pillars for maintaining life. Hence, it is the tripod of life. So loss of tripod is the base of somatic death. And absence of brain function, that is CNS, loss of CNS function, loss of muscle tone. This is because of the loss of innervation. Reflexes are lost. And this is the primary felicity. Muscles become flaccid and this Primary flaccidity is because of loss of innervation, because of cessation of the central nervous system functions. Reflexes are also lost, drooping of the lower jaw, looseness of the limbs, and no response to the external stimuli. Then the cessation of circulation. Cessation of circulation is determined by palpatory method that we feel the pulse, but sometimes this is not a reliable indicator of death, then we have to do the auscultation because the heart may continue to beat feebly without producing any pulse in the peripheral arteries. So auscultation is more reliable method for detection for detecting the absence of cardiac activity. But auscultation must be performed carefully over the whole precordial area before it is decided that the cardiac activity is absent. Sometimes heart sound may be so feeble because of thick chest pawn or in emphysematous lungs, the heart being distant and the sound cannot be readily heard. So in these cases, ECG is the sure criteria. So this will settle the issue. ECG should be done in all cases, but in those cases particularly when the heart sounds are feeble, the ECG will be the final decision. Now cessation of respiration, we have to establish the cessation of respiration this may be detected by careful inspection of the chest and abdomen. Absence of air NT may be demonstrated by auscultation with stethoscope. And this auscultation should include the larynx also. There are some other tests which were previously used before the invention of the stethoscope, but they are the history now. We now rely the stethoscope as the criteria for auscultation. Now the fixed dilated pupil, this is also because of the loss of the nerve supply. The pupil will not constrict when we throw light, they become fixed. And these bilateral fixed dilated pupil is also a sign of death. When you throw light in the eyes, the pupil will not constrict. They remain dilated and does not respond. This is called fixed dilated pupils. 
and this is present on both sides. And this is due to primary relaxation or because of loss of innervation. So the diagnosis of death should be that we should declare brain death when there is permanent fixed bilateral dilatation of the pupil, absence of nerve reflexes, cessation of respiration without aid, and cessation of cardiac activity, that is complete flat ECG will be obtained. If the heart sounds and the respiration are absent over a continuous period of several minutes, death may be certified. Now coming to the brain death. What is brain death? We say as it is a vague term. Why? Because by saying brain, we, the thing which comes in our mind is that it is the cerebral cortex. It is not the death of the cerebral cortex or the cortical areas of the brain. This basically refers to the death of those centers in the brainstem, which are responsible for the maintenance of breathing, blood pressure, and circulation. These are generally known as vital centers or brainstem centers. As ventilator technology came, circulation and respiration could be maintained by means of mechanical respirator. Despite loss of brain function, and thus we have brought the concept of brain death that is irreversible loss of brain stem centers functioning because with the induction of uh, respirator, the person is respiring artificially, but the brain stem centers are not functioning. So this concept came as brain stem death or brain death. The rest of the brain death is secondary to irreversible cessation of function of the vital centers in the brainstem. That is the other cortical areas, other cortical centers will also die because of the loss of the uh, vital centers. So brain death is irreversible and complete cessation of functioning of the brain. Brain includes then all the central nervous system structures except the spinal cord because the reflexes can have been seen after the brain death, they are dependent on the spinal cord. So brain death is the brain stem death, the vital respiratory center and the cardiac centers, they are in the brain stem. So this is called as brain death, which control the respiration and the circulation and their death is called brain death. So it should be clear that by the term brain death, we mean that this is the death of the vital centers in the brainstem. Once the brainstem death has been established, no matter how healthy an individual is, life will not return to the patient even with continuous cardiopulmonary support. So cannot be relied upon EEG. If the breathing, circulation, and blood pressure are maintained spontaneously, only and only then the person cannot be declared dead if the breathing and circulation is going on or maintaining spontaneously without any aid. If after the somatic death, the heartbeat is maintained by artificial means, then heart may be regarded as a part of heart lung preparation where the human body is now working as organ bank. We are just maintaining the circulation and respiration. We are providing the nourishment to the organs. Person is dead, but the nourishment and the respiration is provided artificially to keep heart lung preparation 
and that heart can be regarded as the beating donor heart. So it is in those circumstances, in these circumstances that the beating heart may be removed for organ transplantation. And this is called as beating heart donor or a living cadaver. That is living, heart is living, but it is a cadaver, body is dead. After the establishment of brain death stem death, the retention of the patient on the ventilator facilitates a fully oxygenated cadaver transplant called beating heart donor. And the success of homograph depends upon the type of tissue involved and the rapidity of its removal after circulation has been stopped in the donor. The best results are obtained if the organs are taken while the circulation is present or immediately after the cessation. Then what is the mechanism of brain death? It may be brain injury has a number of causes like trauma, cerebrovascular accidents, generalized hypoxia. They all produce brain edema. And edema is accompanied by increase in intracranial pressure, leading to gradual decrease in the cerebral circulation to the level of almost cessation, causing aseptic necrosis of the brain. And within three to five days, widespread brain destruction and pain necrosis throughout the cerebrum and brainstem. The brain become liquid mass, which is known as a respiratory brain, respirator brain, and further increase in the intracranial pressure compresses the entire brain. Now, the criteria for determining the permanent non-functioning of the brain, unresponsiveness, no movement and breathing, that is no reflexes, no breathing, respiratory movement, no reflexes, and flat EG, they are the criteria for complete destruction of the brain. Now, what is the criteria of removal of organs for transplantation? Cornea can be removed from the dead body within six hours, skin within 24 hours, bone within 48 hours, kidney 45 minutes, and heart in one hour, and the lungs and liver in 15 minutes. Autograph is said as when the transplant, transplanted organ is on the same body, like skin transplant from same individual to another place, from one place to the other. And allograft is organs or tissue transplanted from one individual to another of the same species. So important point for resuscitation in death certification, they are important because in certain situations, the heart may be beating and you are not perceiving them. So resuscitative measures should be continued for as long as half an hour, even if the person is clinically dead in cases of especially electric shock, barbiturate poisoning, and drowning. So summary of this lecture is that we have discussed and learned about the diagnosis and death. And we know that this is upon the immediate physical signs. And these immediate physical signs, they are actually the immediate changes which appear at the moment of death. We have also learned that this happens because of the loss of tripod of life. We have learned the basic phenomena involved in the loss of reflexes, cessation of circulation, and cessation of respiration is because of loss of tripod. Fixed dilated pupils are also because of loss of reflexes, and we have discussed brain death in detail, that it's a vague term. This is not the cerebral cortex, but this is the vital centers in the brainstem. So death of the vital centers in the brainstem is called brain death. 
and we have also discussed the beating heart donor, that is the person is dead, but artificially with the help of respirator, the uh, artificially the respiration and the circulation is maintained and the heart is beating, that is beating heart donor. So thank you very much. This is all about the second lecture. We'll inshallah continue in the next lecture.